Hi, I'm Natalie. I want to welcome you to our Chanson Royale install video. That's our Miracle Max Royale under counter machine. Now we're going to install this. We're also going to show you ways to install it with different filters. And while this is our most complicated install technically, I want you to know that it's so easy that number one, a girl can do it. And number two, we've actually had two very young boys that were eight years old. These are separate families. One did it to help his mom and one did it to help his grandmother. So while this is a little more complicated than some, uh, it's not that difficult. You're going to need a few standard tools. Well, they're not all standard, but most people have scissors. You're going to need a sharp pair of scissors. You're going to need a pair of pliers. You're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver. Now, I use a measuring tape. You can also eyeball this. That's if you're going to need to drill a hole. If you need to drill a hole, I'm going to wear eye protection, and I recommend that you do as well. Now, a lot of people uh, don't need to drill a hole. They already have either a former RO system that had a, um, a faucet that you can remove or a soap dispenser that you can remove, and you can use that hole. But if you do need a hole, you're going to need a drill. And if you don't have a drill, you can rent one from Home Depot. Or if you have granite, what you might do is call a tile store and hire somebody to come out and um, drill that hole for you um, if you're uncomfortable with it. Or you can get a plumber to do all of this. But let's watch how it's done and you may feel comfortable with it. You're going to need a one quarter inch drill bit. I'll show you why later. And I went to Home Depot and I bought this uh, one and a half inch hole saw. Now I bought mine with the arbor on it and there are three different possibilities of what type of hole saw you would need and we're going to write this down so you can see it but if you are going to cut granite or you're going to have somebody cutting granite you're going to need a one and a quarter inch diamond hole saw to cut the granite. You're going to need a carbon grit hole saw if you have a cast iron sink and in my case here today, I have a stainless steel sink. So I'm going to be using a bimetal hole saw. Now you can use them as small as one and three eighths inch. It's a little bit easier to find the one and a half inch size. Now, because this is our chance and demo test sink, I want to show you an alternative to drilling a hole. That's a possibility for you. You may have a much older sink, but in our case, we already have three holes in this sink that came with the sink when we bought it. This is a stainless steel sink and because we use a one-handled faucet you'll see here at the bottom everything goes through one hole. So in our case we can take this faucet off, we can move it over, we can get everything down through that one hole and then the faucet would also screw in from the sides and then our Chance and Roy Al ionizer can go through one of the spare holes that was there. So before you drop your um, Chance and Roy Al faucet head down into your hole, the first thing you're going to want to do is remove this nut. And you can do that by hand. It does take a minute there. So we're going to drop this down into the hole. We've removed the nut. And I am going to go down underneath the sink in order to put that nut on. Ultimately, I'll have to have somebody here to study this a little bit. Um, but let's go down underneath. And we're going to need the installation cup that comes right in your package. It's this gray plastic piece. And what that's going to do is turn this nut and make my job very simple. Now when you're working in a kitchen that has um, a garbage disposal and everything, this is a little bit awkward to do, um, but it's not impossible. And you may have to take a little bit of time and rest your arm. Um, you feed the cord through the nut and you're going to go up and you're going to hand tighten the nut to start with. 
and it's bobbling around up there a little bit because um, it's loose. But once I get this hand tightened up there is when I'll thread the cup onto this cord and get it up there and it'll make it very easy to get the nut tight. You won't need a special tool. Well, this is a special tool. And what I recommend that you do, leave the cup on the cord when you're done. Don't take it off. You're going to plug this cord into the ionizer later, but that way you never lose this piece. And if you ever have to remove the ionizer to send it in for any type of uh, cleaning or repair, you have your tool right there. And there we go. We're ready for the next stage. So we're going to begin the next stage of our install. And we have a couple of bags of parts. I'm going to cut this bag open and lay them out. I'm going to set aside the pH test kit. This is this black piece is called a drain saddle. I'll be explaining that. And we have several other interesting pieces here. We have some other parts. And we're just going to lay everything out to be easily accessible. And we're going to start, you have a couple of different sizes of tubing. You'll notice that one is larger than the others. And the large one is going to go between this top piece and the faucet. So let me get everything together and I'll show you exactly how we're going to do that. So here's a little rubber piece that's going to protect your ionizer. Um, there's a space for the data cord and a space for your tubing. So we're just going to fit that over the corresponding sizes and just press it on until it's secure. Then I'm going to cut the tubing. Anytime you use scissors on your tubing, you want to make sure that you're making very clean cuts and that your cuts are not um, folding the tubing. Right now I'm not cutting the tubing, I'm just cutting the zip ties that hold it. But we use quick connect fittings that are very, very easy to use. So I'm going to press this straight down into the ionizer and you'll see that now when I try to pull that up, I cannot pull that out. It is secure. So I made sure that that cut was um, flat first. And this is a quick connect fitting. That's a 3 8 inch size quick connect fitting. And we're going to push one end. They're the, exactly the same on both ends. We're going to push one end onto the faucet tip. And the other end, we will push the hose right in. Now, if you have too much hose there, you can trim it and make it shorter, but one of the reasons that you might not want to do that is at some point you might have to move your ionizer out from underneath the sink. So I'm going to get back in here and I'm going to push that on to the tip of the faucet and if I push it all the way up, when I go to pull that down, it's completely secure. Now what you heard falling there was that cup that remember I told you leave that cup on the uh, cord. Now this is your data cable. We're not plugging in the actual ionizer yet, but we can plug in the data cable. Now it's rounded except for one side, and so you want to line up the flat side with what's the flat side of this plastic piece. And it'll be very clear to you when you're looking we're just going to push that right down into there very carefully. You don't want to bend anything. And then after this ionizer is hooked up, it will communicate with the smart digital faucet. So I'm going to keep everything out here. When we turn the ionizer around in the back, there are some plugs that have been placed in. We're going to remove these little collars just like that, just pull them out with my fingers and we're going to pull those plugs out. Well, we have to push down. There's a collar on the quick connect fitting. We're going to push down on that collar 
and then the um, plugs will slide right out. There we go. This other end of the tube is going to go and push into the quick connect fitting that we put on the tip of the faucet. The tip of the faucet is a brass colored fitting and we put the uh, 3 8 quick connect on it and we're pushing the tubing right up into it. You want to do a very firm push so that you're getting all the way up in there and then when you pull down that is not going to come loose. If you need to disconnect something at a later time, you push the collar up, pull the tube down and it comes right apart. So it's very simple. We have about half of our install done already. Now we're going to install our T diverter valve on the shutoff valve. It's not that difficult to do, but what does become a little confusing is that we have three of them to choose from. You have a couple of different sizes, so we've tried to provide you with a standard size of everything that you will need for an install. Some rare plumbing issues, you may have to go to Home Depot and get a different valve, but again, it's called a T diverter valve. These are half inch valves, and this is a 3 eighths inch valve. So we're going to start by turning off the water. So typically, you will turn the water until it um, is off and then you will unscrew and you may need a little pair of pliers to help you with that. I'm going to be able to hand tighten this but you may need some pliers to get in there. This is a hose that is going to take your water into the ionizer but we're going to take some water off of that for right now. So we're going to unscrew that piece we're going to choose the size of diverter that fits. So this 3 8 inch valve is too small, so I know that I need a half inch one. So I'm going to screw the half inch valve onto the fitting. And then you do about a quarter turn tighten after it's tight. And then it's very simple. You screw your um, hose right back on and you get it tight and then again you go about a quarter inch turn. You may need pliers to be able to do that. So then as you can see you'll have to remember later to turn this back on but for right now let's leave it off. We have um, a space here for our hose to go into the quick connect fitting and carry water to our ionizer. If you're not using any kind of pre-filtration and you are just um, doing your Chanson water um, ionizer today, your um, hose will go straight from this source over to the ionizer. If you're using pre-filtration, there will be some more steps and I can show you how we'll do that later. But let's take a piece of hose and we're cutting off the zip tie the lengths can be adjusted. So you press that right in very firmly and again you won't be able to pull that out. Now one of the things we like to do around here is create what we call shutoff valves. It makes life a little simpler when you have that option. This is your shutoff valve for the source that carries cold water to your household faucet and um, by teeing off it's going to take it to either your pre-filter or your ionizer. But if at some point you need to block the water from going, we're just going to make a clean cut, very straight, not folded, and we're going to push in from one end and then when we pull out, it doesn't go anywhere. And we're going to push in from this end. And the same thing. It's very firm. You're going to check for leaks later, but you shouldn't have any. And if you do, you just need to per, uh, push it in a little bit more. Now, when a um, 
line is open, this is going to be straight. If you need to shut it off, you turn it and this, think of this as cutting the line. Um, you're not making a physical cut with anything, but it cuts the water off and when you want to turn it back on, this goes straight with the line. That's how you're going to be able to tell off and on. Now this piece will go straight to the back of your ionizer. Now we have our inlet tube for the water going into the ionizer here on the right and our outlet on the left. It does tell you that on the bottom of the ionizer, but for somebody that's a little older like myself, that's a little hard for me to read. It is down there, but in, on this ionizer, the inlet valve is on the right and the out water um, is on the left. So we're gonna push the end of this tube. We're taking water from the cold water line, remember? and we're taking it straight into the inlet tube by pushing firmly and pulling back to test that connection. So now we've installed our faucet, we're hooked up to the cold water supply, and after a while we're going to show you how to get a pre-filter in there. We've shown you that you don't need all the parts that come with it, and just a moment we'll show you what to do next. Now one of the things that you want to be aware of is that some customers who have older homes have copper lines under here. And unless you're really handy, you might need a plumber to do your install because it might involve some cutting into the copper lines and we don't want you to try to do that. But a plumber shouldn't charge you too much for this type of an install. We're taking a lot more time to explain things today. Uh, when I installed our, our one in our test kitchen a few weeks back, it took me about 30 minutes, which did not include drilling a hole. Now, you have an interesting piece here, and this piece is called a pressure reducer. It's a very nice heavy-duty metal um, uh, part, and it's very simple to install, and it has a side that says in and a side that says out. Now we've plugged in over here to our cold water line and I'm just going to make a very simple cut again with my scissors doing a straight cut, not getting that folded and I'm going to push the side that's closest to the water pipe in to the inside and the one that's going out is going to go out to the ionizer. Now, if we are using a ionizer armor, um, I'm going to get my assistant to hand uh, this to me, and I think he's off camera, but this is our Mauricio, our tech support, who is just wonderful. If you ever need any help, have questions about installation, Mauricio is probably the one that you'll be able to talk to, and he's just wonderful. Now, for a limited time, we're including the ionizer armor for free. If that uh, program has passed, I highly recommend that you go ahead and get one. It straps right on to the water inlet line and is just a fabulous product to help you keep your glasses clean. It helps protect your ionizer plates. I put one of the pieces on one side of the same line that we're working on, the water inlet line, and then I use the zip ties to tighten on there and I'm just demonstrating right now I'm not going to do this um, but you would uh, use the zip tie on both sides and then you never have to do anything with that again it's just absolutely as simple as pie now we're doing this install today first without a pre-filter and I've told you that we're going to do um, again with the different pre-filters later. I'm cutting the zip ties off of the extra piece of tubing and this is going to be for our out tube. And we have our out tube here and we're going to push right down into it. So you can see how simple everything has been so far. We have a power cord over here that we're going to need to plug in at some point. And while I told you that this was our most complicated install, 
This is one of the little pieces that I'm talking about. This is not difficult at all. You can do it, I promise you. It does involve drilling another hole. This is our drain saddle. And in the past, we have had to have acidic water going down your sink. And in order to avoid that, Chanson has come up with a very unique system that takes it down the drain. But the beautiful part of this system is that when you want it, you can just push your ionizer buttons and we'll have acidic water available to you. Well, I ran into something interesting while we were shooting this install video, and that is that we have two different types of drain saddles. This one that sticks out like a male end is called a compression nut, and this one is a quick connect fitting. And so they work slightly, slightly differently, and I was giving you instructions for this type of a fitting. So I'm going to go ahead and give you different instructions, but, but because the next thing that we're going to do is install a nano pre-filter with this, um, we're going to need this second drain saddle anyway. So I'm going to show you that in this case, we're going to use this foam. We're going to take the center piece out and we're going to pull the tape off and rather than pressing that onto the fitting itself, we're going to put it onto the pipe and use that as a guide for drilling the pipe. And we're going to um, use the quarter inch drill bit and we would push on the pipe and you're going to have to be careful. This is not that easy to do necessarily because it's going to try to move around. And so you're going to drill. You're going to need to hold on to your pipe. You're going to hold on to your drill. You want to protect your hands. If you want to have a plumber do this, go ahead. Um, but what you need to do is when that first breaks through the pipe, you want to make sure you're not pressing through and getting the other side of the pipe. You just want to drill through one side after you have your hole and um, for this fitting, if I were going to drill now, I would go ahead and take this off and use that piece and do that. We don't want to stick that in there the way I was going to. Um, but let's pretend that because this is my demo uh, system here, let's pretend that we have drilled our hole and then we would go with the, the male fitting area or the quick connect fitting area and fit it right over the hole and strap on the, um, the drain saddle. And this is for water to exit down your sink, um, your drain line, and it makes it very simple and it's, it's unique. I don't know of another brand of ionizer that uses this type of a system. All right, so we are back. We are pretending like I have drilled this hole. And remember, we're not drilling through this opening. We've taken it off and we've drilled through the hole in the foam. But this is our outline and we are gonna push it right into that quick connect fitting. This one we're ignoring for right now because this is for the installation of a filter that I'm going to show you in the next segment. So we just have a couple more steps. If you don't like the length of the line, it's okay to trim the line shorter. Um, I think it's reasonable to have a little bit of length to take it out. So here are a couple more things. There are some parts in here that are quick connect shutoff valves that we're not going to be using right now. I'm going to set those aside. This is the opening for your Himalayan rock salt port. You just turn that and open it, and it's right there. This is an extra one that you're going to want to keep. And I want to show you that we've included two caps for you. And I like you to have these caps in case you ever need to send the ionizer in for cleaning or for repair. I want you to be able to plug these lines and not have to worry about them. Now remember, you can also turn this off here 
And remember that when you were done with our installation, you're going to want to turn your water line back on over here. But if you have to take this off, there's a little collar here. And you press down on the collar, and that hose is going to come right out. And you've got this wonderful little cap. It's a quick connect fitting. You're going to press that right on. That's not coming off until we push the collar down. And when your ionizer comes back, you're going to push that collar down and it's going to come right out. And when we put this back in, just by pressing down, pull on it. It's not coming out unless you press that collar down. So save these, keep them in a drawer, keep your extra Himalayan rock salt port. And here you have a color chart and some pH test drops that you can test your different water settings with uh, when we're all done. But the last thing that we have to do is plug in our ionizer. So the cord goes underneath and it has an interesting shape here. Part of it's flat and you're going to line it up with the corresponding shape and plug that in and set it underneath your sink and you're going to want to use a power strip with a surge protector to, to plug this in if you don't have enough plugs. This is a test and demo sink so we don't have a plug here at all. You can see it's a grounded three uh, pronged cord but nothing is going to work until you plug that in and turn your cold water line on. So that is how simple. It's much quicker to do this in person. And you can kind of manage your cords a little bit, make it a little nicer and neater when you're all done there. And we're going to go ahead and end this segment and move on to what the installation would look like when you're adding a nano and a tank. And then we're also going to show you in a separate section a C3 uh, filter. We do highly recommend pre-filtration. All water ionizers, everyone on the market has um, some kind of pre-filtration. A couple of them even have two pre-filters. The extra one's usually just nothing more than a sediment pre-filter. And we just do not want you to be concentrating contaminants and driving them deeper into your cells. We want to remove all the bad stuff that we possibly can before you ionize your water so that you're getting the absolute healthiest possible water. So follow along how to install that. If you haven't purchased one already, please consider it in the near future. It's wonderful for your health, and we'll see you in a few minutes.